Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. So today's project that we have to do is get these trusses officially bolted down. Um, right now, they're just kind of secured in with some construction screws. And unfortunately, construction screws aren't approved to actually be used for anything structural. I know it doesn't make sense, but that's what the box says. And that's from two different places, uh, like Grip Right from Menards and another kind from uh, Home Depot. So. We definitely want to go ahead and get all these trusses nailed down. So we're going to toe nail down through the trusses into the top plate. And today we'll probably only get the garage knocked out. And then we have to go ahead and put on these hurricane straps. Now the engineers got two different kinds. The first kind is the ones that look like these. So it doesn't matter which way you put it, but if you bolt it to the top plate this way or to the top plate this way, you bolt straight in and then this side up here goes into straight into the side of the truss. Now, because these top plates are two by eights in the garage and two by tens in the house, the engineer also has another type of uh, hurricane strap, which is the same type of gussets that we used to attach all of the corners in the basement. So going down the main beam where there's a corner and all the LVLs around the perimeter, these gussets just kind of go in like that and bolt everything down. So. We're gonna go ahead and do like say the hurricane straps on like the right front and then we'll go ahead and put the gussets on like the left back. That way you got both sides of the truss bolted down. And then again, we're still gonna use uh, nails and toenail down through and get these things secured. And the reason why we wanna get these done is yesterday was kind of a scary moment. Um, we had tornado winds come through and I mean, they were sustained winds. They weren't just like gusts blowing every now and again. We probably had a good 10 minute period where the wind was blowing over 50 miles an hour straight through. Um, I've got huge dead ash trees down everywhere in the back. Uh, there's one up in the front. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's leaning up this way. We've got branches down all over everywhere throughout the driveway and through the yard. And I mean, there's some four or five, six inches in diameter. So that wind really messed us up yesterday. Luckily, the trusses don't look like they've gone anywhere, but unfortunately those construction screws um, aren't really good for movement. They're good for holding things together, but anytime you have lateral movement with any type of really screw or bolt, their shear strength is just horrible and they snap. So I wouldn't be surprised if I go through, if I wanted to take out some of these construction screws, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them aren't even holding because they've already been severed. So uh, we gotta get nails in here and get them all down. And uh, that's the project that we're gonna do for today. So for this one, I actually don't want to go too far forward because the engineer does have blocking that still needs to go in here to basically attach this truss to the other truss on the other side. So all of this is reinforced uh, kind of laterally. So I'll probably leave that much room. I really don't feel like taking that screw out. So we'll leave them somewhere in the middle, uh, but we'll go ahead and get this one down. So that way we get more support and the blocking is going to help later on too.
so that should definitely help uh getting toe nailed two sets of hurricane straps so this thing's pretty much going to be locked down not going anywhere uh, at least until we get the sheathing on um, it's a good thing that the wind comes from the west and goes straight east so the fact that these trusses are sitting this way uh, we only got a little bit of uh, shaking kind of over at the top for a minute um, but really I didn't see any movement or anything yesterday which is great because uh, that would have been scary to have all these blow over or to have some of these screws uh, snap even the braces up there to have them snap that would have been a bad day real quick so uh, again, luckily we'll be able to get these uh, knocked out today. Um, don't know how much filming I'm going to do on this just because of how uh, difficult and limited space I have up here, especially when a truss is in the way. The camera is obviously in the way of me pounding, but uh, definitely wish I had a gun for this uh, type of uh, ordeal, but it uh, doesn't matter. We'll get an arm workout today and we'll, we'll get them all done. Just got all that knocked out. Uh, both straps are on. That was not fun. My arm is going to kill me tomorrow. Um, and that's only the garage at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 trusses. So uh, we still got 31 more to go inside of the house. Um, so maybe I'll wait for the weekend, see if my dad comes out and helps. He can take one side and I can take the other and uh, then that won't be so bad doing that many nails and putting those back in. But uh, right now, so game plan now is, uh, actually Brian just left, he just picked up all the ICF braces, so we're completely done with that now. Um, so it looks like the day's coming to an end anyway. So tomorrow I'm probably gonna start getting some uh, more bracing up in here. And actually, let me just go ahead and show you this guys uh, now. Um, eventually we have to start getting the peaks on the roof and the way they want that done is you put a 2 by 4 on each truss uh, running this way perpendicular to where the trusses are and then the peak kind of sits in between on top of the flat spot and where the uh, peak of the roof goes. I was testing this out the other day to see how it was gonna look and basically it's pretty easy uh gonna be time consuming but just wait till i get up here Ugh. Ugh. okay so basically they want a two by four to run this way down all these flat parts and they want the two by fours no more than two feet extended. Man, real quick, nothing beats country views 
I don't know what it is about the land being so flat for so long, but out where we live, we have some of the most insane sunrises because you can see so far on the horizon, you just get crazy purples and pinks and yellows and stuff like that. And I know the uh, winter sun isn't the best because it's so far over that way on the south side, but uh, man, you get some pretty sunsets out here. It's insane. But anyway, back to this, you can see what I'm talking about. So we got a two by four as far over as we can go before it starts to hit uh, the down slant on each side. And then two feet over, you put a two by four and two feet over, you put a two by four. You probably just could put one in the middle, but then you're over your two feet on center and the manufacturer didn't recommend that. Um, and then you can see the peak goes on nicely, fits beautifully. And then you kind of toenail down in through the peak into these two by fours. And then once they're all on and the sheathing's on, they'll be bolted on and they can't go anywhere. But uh, we got to do four two by fours all the way across the entire house and all the way across the entire garage. And then um, they also want some internal bracing, kind of like where we have bracing here. There is recommended spots where two by fours have to run across for your internal bracing. And every single truss uh, is different where that bracing needs to be. So we actually have to go and make some more runs uh, to Home Depot or Lowe's and pick up some more two by fours. All right, so I'm gonna get down here without breaking my neck and uh, we will see you guys tomorrow when we figure out again what game plan we're gonna do, what sort of bracing and uh, other stuff I wanna do. Cause I, like I said, I do wanna get the garage knocked out first. So if we can go and get um, everything that we need, if we, if we run out of stuff for the uh, ladder bracing, uh, I need a boom lift. We need to get the side this way done. Uh, Aaron and I actually probably will go and order the uh, garage doors and they can be installed for free if you get them from Home Depot. But uh, we do want to wait though because Home Depot likes to put on a window and door sale uh, like once or twice a year and that can be up to 15% off. And our garage doors are, uh, I think, almost $10,000. So to get 15% off of that would be uh, extremely nice. So I don't know at what point in time we are going to buy those, but I would like to get them on and get the garage completely sealed in for the winter. Um, and then also on, I think, Friday, uh, we are going to go and purchase uh, the actual home windows and doors because the guy that we were dealing with, where Geldwin said that the pricing is going to drastically shoot up after uh, November 30th. So I don't know why, I don't know what's changing, but we need to get in there and get those ordered because not only is there a seven week uh, lead time again, but I don't wanna pay any more money than we're already paying, which uh, it uh, with tax, our windows and doors are twenty nine thousand three hundred and seventy five and like thirty one cents. So I am already paying an arm and a leg for those. I do not want to be paying anymore. So uh, Friday we're purchasing, and uh, tomorrow we'll get more bracing done, and then probably maybe even go purchase the sheathing. And I might be able to throw a sheath uh, a panel on or two myself up here. And then again, uh, sheathing wise, we got to get that zip up in here in between the last end truss and this common truss in the garage and we got to get this sealed off too so that way the garage is uh weathered in from uh anything coming in this way so hang tight and we will see you guys early tomorrow morning hey everybody welcome back for another day um so before we get started today uh there's a few things it's probably not going to get a lot done today again because it is freezing the wind is blowing the sun has come out now but it was like sleet hail there for a minute, just blowing sideways right in your face. Not exactly a good day to be laying uh, roof sheathing or getting the panels up in here to block off the house from the garage. On a side note, what I wanted to go over real quick is we just got more rubbar wall delivered. And I wanna take this time actually to say thank you to the owner of rubbar wall. Um, he came across one of my videos, uh, found my contact information, called me up and basically wanted to say thank you. Um, you really did your research and uh, I loved your video. Can I please put it up on my website? And on top of that, they gave me a discount on my other order. So I just got seven more buckets of the rubbar wall and one more bucket of mastic because 
I'm about maybe 20% left on my first bucket of mastic and I still have to go over all of the windows and doors in the house and all the way up and around uh, the sill plate to the uh, new Dura ICF. So I got one more bucket of that. Now, I still got two buckets left over from the last spray that we did all around the basement and garage foundation. So that should give me nine buckets to do the house, which I think is more than enough. I'll probably have two left over again. Um, but I'll definitely be into that second bucket of mastic uh, to get everything sealed and protected. Um, so right now, before we do anything though, this stuff cannot sit outside and freeze because the uh, ICF approved rubber wall is aqua based. So uh, it can't freeze or I guess it destroys the product or something. So I'm gonna load this up in my uh, truck right now and head to my in-laws and uh, get it down into the basement where it can stay nice and warm and dry. We're gonna go ahead and try and uh, pick up what we can today, get this rubber wall over to my in-laws and get it warm. And then maybe if this wind freaking dies down eventually, I'll be able to get up there and figure out how I'm gonna get the sheets into the house, pull them up to the uh, sill plate, move them maybe in between where the common and the ends have room to push it through and then I got again slip it in between two trusses and then nail it down so we'll see how that goes I don't know but uh, I got to get going get this stuff uh, warm and then I will see you guys back whenever I start working on the sheathing up there all right so we made it back um, I went ahead and dropped off all the rubber wall and I did go ahead and pick up the first kind of load of our sheathing now my truck obviously can't carry that much weight and my uh, trailer can't carry that much weight either but uh, we did go ahead and decide to go with um, 19 30 seconds plywood now the reason why I went with plywood two reasons one again I always like plywood better than OSB especially for the roofing because as you can already see from inside of the subfloor inside of the house you've already got some strands kind of lifting up um, I think it buckles a little bit more and uh, I think for a roof when you have a smooth surface like this any water that does get on this I think this being so smooth it can kind of sheet off a little bit better than OSB so this doesn't rot out as easy I don't think um, I think it also being smoother is gonna be a nicer surface to put the peel and stick down so it actually adheres and sticks so um, oh and the biggest reason why I went with the plywood is right now it is three dollars a board cheaper um, that stuff was uh, 2377 a board I think as opposed to uh, OSB was almost 28 a board so I think that's crazy that plywood is now cheaper than OSB because it's never been that way before um, but the other benefit um, of that stuff is it's lighter than OSB uh, because it doesn't have all that glue in there or as much glue so it'll be easier to put up and I'm happy that I went with that stuff because the fact that Home Depot carries 19 30 seconds while everyone else carries what they call 5 8 where it's only 0.56 or 0.57 that stuff is a 0.59 so that's as close to 5 8 as I can get uh, and it's really only one thirty second off from being a true 5 8 so uh, I think that's gonna be the best stuff that we can use now I'm surprised that my dad and Home Depot and everyone was like, what, you're putting what on your roof? Um, you only use half inch on a roof. Well, I don't know about you, but half inch to me seems very thin to be using on a roof, um, especially with a 24 inch on center. Um, the engineer has 5.8 spec out, so that's what I'm using or as close to 5.8. So if I am above code, I'm all for that. I don't think code is that great. In fact, if you look at the zip panels here, whether it be bonded to the poly ISO or the zip panels that I'm going to put up there that doesn't have the uh, uh, poly ISO on it, 7.16 is a joke to me. Um, you can throw a rock hard enough at 7.16 and it'll probably go right through. And that's what entire houses are getting made out of. So. Um, I don't know why they go 7 16 for code. They still make half inch. I mean, that's only 1 16th of an inch thicker anyway. But to me, I'm going to go with uh, the strongest that I can. And in fact, that this is my roof that we're talking about, I'm going to go ahead and use it. The only weak part of this house really is going to be the gable ends that are exposed on the roof. So um, strength for me. So I'm going with that. 
So let's go ahead and get up here. The wind's still blowing pretty strong, but let's see if we can figure out how to start getting these panels uh, in between there, uh, the two trusses, get them slid in, and then uh, see if we can get uh, one or two uh, knocked out and uh, uh, nailed down. Hey everybody, welcome back for another day. So as you can see behind me here, we got the boom lift. And sorry I didn't record the last few days, the weather was just way too bad. Um, way too rainy, way too windy. Um, didn't want to set a GoPro up and uh, re-put on all the doors and stuff since they've got the external mics and obviously water can't get in that way. But as you can see behind me, we started getting in all of the walls just on this gable end. Um, today's plan is to finish out this wall, uh, probably run the two by fours on the top across, get the first couple uh, peaks put on, that way obviously that wall can be finished too. Um, I don't know if I'm going to tape and seam, I don't know if it's going to stick in this cold weather and uh, if the mastic's going to be any good to try and put on the wall uh, right now uh, the way it is. Um, but I would like to start getting the uh, boom lift moved over here into the front yard or the backyard. We've got to measure out the uh, ends of these trusses to make sure that they're all equal. So when we put on a fascia board, uh, it's all equal. And uh, we need to start building the ladder system on this end. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and throw up our first panel. So uh, I'm trying to set the GoPro up somewhere where you guys can see everything and uh, get this finished. But this thing is crazy so far. I can't believe that you got, what, eight feet on that first panel, four on the next. Then you've got another four that needs to go up above that. So that's 16 feet. That's still not going to reach the top of that flat part right there. I think it's about three inches shy. Then you've got more of the peak that needs to go up there. So that is an insanely big wall that I don't know how we're going to decorate it out. I don't know if we're going to add any accents or anything to it, but... Uh, I don't know. Uh, this thing has definitely got some big parts to it that uh, it's funny to see it finally in person and uh, figure out what you're going to do with it. But uh, uh, again, let's go ahead and set up and let's see if we can get this thing knocked out and finished today. I'm tired of waiting, waiting. I'm tired of waiting, waiting. I'm tired of waiting. 
I'm gonna wrap this video up here and I'm gonna wrap up today here. Uh, but as you can see, we got the whole garage side done, uh, the ladder and all. Um, tomorrow we need to start working on the sheathing and finishing off all the waterproofing and taping. I'm probably still gonna do that throughout the night, but you guys don't have to see me do that. You've already seen taping and uh, mudding or masticking once, you don't need to see it again. But uh, what I need to work on before I can finish the taping and everything is inside of the garage, there's a few spots where uh, the uh, zip R didn't come together, uh, either falling on the end truss or obviously you got that horizontal line running through each one of them. So I went through in each one of the uh, two bys, I marked them out what the space is. So now I can cut a bunch of two by fours that can go horizontal wise and kind of toenail them in there. So that way you have something on the outside to nail that panel to, just so that panel doesn't have a little bit of flex in between where the two seams are. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that all the way across the bottom. And then obviously there's a seam up top and that's it. So we only have to worry about the complete bottom and about halfway up, like in the middle going across there, but those marks should run up. Kind of surprised that those two buys aren't exactly on center all the way across. Um, like the first one over here, 19 and three quarter, 20, 21 and a quarter, 19 and a half, 20 and nine sixteenths, 20 and three eighths. Literally every single one of those is different. I don't know how um, you get an on center layout of going every eight feet or four feet and uh, making sure that you're hitting a stud. It's a good thing they're three and a half inches wide because there were some that they weren't dead center. They were a little bit off to one side or the other. And I was wondering why that was. I know the zip panels uh, wasn't the issue, but, but that's why every single solitary one of those end trusses all the way down uh, is a different size in between. So um, somehow it all works out that if you get, you know, a couple on this side that are off and a couple on that side that are off, a few are going to be the exact same. Like I know there's more than one 19 and a half like that one and that one. Uh, but as they're coming together, I don't know, it's weird. But I wanna get all the seams basically taped up on the outside, but also reinforced on the inside. So that way that wall is a little bit more sturdy and I don't have to worry about anything. Um, we also only got one peak on, so the rest of the peaks have to go onto the garage. Um, but we can do that as we start sheathing up this way. And then again, if you look all the way up in there, that end wall needs to be done tomorrow too as I only got uh, that little bit there started so far. So tomorrow, just know that I'm probably gonna go ahead and continue uh, finishing off and sealing that wall and then taping it up. And then we'll go ahead and start on sheathing. So I don't know how many of you are looking forward to sheathing, but it's coming. I uh, just don't want these videos to get too long. Please like, subscribe. Uh, neck of the woods 2020 is our instagram if you guys have any questions that you want to personal message us uh or just comment on the youtube channel on the videos and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as possible but i uh, hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see y'all later and one more thing before we wrap this up uh aaron and i finally got some christmas lights up uh, it's pretty dark outside you probably can't see too much back over in here but obviously these are lighting up pretty bright um, if you missed the video where we installed these uh, waterproof outlet boxes right here we did one on this side and we did one on this side and right now the uh, lights are hooked up into these little like $15 um, they got a turn dial on them basically you can turn them on off dusk dawn and then there's i think two four six eight an hours that they'll run but right now we just got them set on the dust till dawn so it's just a photo cell and our uh lights up here are on a photo cell too but that photo cell is hooked up over at the uh, uh power box over here that you probably can't see but uh i just think it's a uh, sweet to kind of the finally have something nice to look at and uh when you're kind of pulling into the driveway you can see might do a couple more strands because we've obviously got these support posts over here that aren't done so there's one pole here and three pillars going that way or supports and then obviously we've got the uh the gate itself that doesn't have anything on it i told aaron to like pick up a uh like a christmas wreath or something we could do like just two wreaths like right here on that X or something and uh, that cord can go over and just uh, plug into that outlet box too. But uh, 
that'd be sweet. We're finally getting some festivity here and uh, kind of for our first time almost uh, calling it a home. Uh, post a picture up here for you guys in a second. Um, Aaron took one the other night kind of at dusk too where the lights showed up really well but uh, back here in the background there were some like clouds coming in and the way she edited it, it was all spooky and stuff but it looked like Christmas but it also looked like Halloween. So anyway we'll see you guys on the next one.